Hello, everybody. Dave Neal here, stand-up comic host of Bachelor Nation News. And we've got a lot of content to get to you today. If you didn't notice, I'm wearing my new premiere night outfit, which was given by one of our amazing power listeners. That's right. Roses galore on this short sleeve button up. Your boy is going to make all the ladies go wild with this nice little orchard we've got going on over here all right so katie blocked nick vile oh boy this is a great way to start the season the season being the bachelorette premiering july 11th 2022 oh my gosh have my eyes besieged me <laughs> is that a right term 7 p.m eastern time we'll be doing a live stream today one hour before the episode it's going to be jam-packed with content so much to talk about so much to see so much to do so what's wrong with being a rock star rock star power recapper that is we're going to have an after after show. That's right at 10 p.m. Eastern. And I'm also going to do an after show on the West Coast. I may have already had an edible at that time. My neck hurts. I just uh, flew back from the Bahamas. And boy, are my arms tired. Come on, folks. So we'll get into all of this tonight. Make sure you hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. Double check. A lot of people think they're subscribed. They're really not. We need to remind the YouTube algorithm why our channel is hot like fire. All right. So let's get into this. She said, You do you, Nick. I'll see you at the top. Now, you know what? Let's just watch it first before I share my, my opinion here. Dave, what is this? A Katie Thurston fan club? Maybe so. Maybe so. You know what I mean? All right, let's watch. Does Nick Vial not like you? <laughs> Nick Vial is blocked from my phone. There's some tea for you. Oh, shoot. Um, I don't know. Nick is just... I don't know what to say about him, to be honest. All right, body language experts. What does she do when she says Nick is just and then she looks one way and looks the other? She knows she's about... I'm not a body language expert. Um, she knows she's about to get in trouble. She does. Um, I love the comments. Are your eyebrows microbladed? Jeez, can you imagine the ADHD that exists um, within TikTok? It's just we can't even hold on to one thought. Uh, so Katie made her uh, name known on TikTok when her, uh, in, her username was called Vent with Katie. It's now the Katie Thurston as she She's verified as former or bachelorette Katie Thurston, but um, she's going back to her roots. You know what I mean? This reminds me, I don't know if you've seen Major League, the movie. There's a guy, what's his name? Vaughn? What's Ricky Vaughn? Is that his name? Either way, he's this rock star pitcher, comes out of the California Penile League. He's throwing nothing but... You know he's he, he's he's got he's got his wild thing right. He's got his mojo. Then in season two, he tries to be fancy. He's got the glasses. He's throwing dink and dunk pitches, and then everyone's like, "That's not you. Get back to your fastball. Get back to the thing that made you." And then eventually, spoiler alert, he does. The crowd goes wild. That's Charlie Sheen for you, baby. That's his tiger blood. What's Katie Thurston's tiger blood? Spilling messes. Spill that mess, Katie. Clean up aisle, Katie Thurston. Tell us how you feel. Nick is Nick. I honestly kind of forget he, that he exists. Nick is Nick. I forget that he exists. All right, I'll let you watch the whole thing. Why does he keep pausing it? Because every line is worth its own video. Because he's literally, like, I just don't care about his shit. But I get DMs sometimes where I'm like, oh my God, they won't stop talking shit about you. And I'm, I messaged him one time. I was like, hey, just letting you know, like, people are finding the things you're saying kind of odd. And then, in short, he basically reverse unoed it and was like... How great that you have fans that really care about you and, and you get it and don't take it personally. Okay, whatever. You do you, Nick. Ah. I'll see you at the top. Whoa! You do you, Nick. I'll see you at the top. Now look, uh, Nick's got Nick's got points, right? It's just it just stings. His point being. Uh, <laughs> His reverse Uno point being, hey, look, you got fans. Isn't this great? They're going to dig through everything I say about you. Completely not acknowledging the fact that his commodity is a certain brand of cynicism that looks at the contestants with a cynical eye. That's his brand. That's what he does. That's what he's known for. That's what makes his podcast successful. Not everyone likes that. Uh, but it's kind of like a detective, right? You want detectives to solve the issues around their, you know, your community. You want them to solve it. But if you're ever questioned by a detective, you hate that detective. What are you doing Thursday night? I don't know, buddy. What were you doing? Uh, well, you know, you look like a, huh? You know, so 
I don't know, maybe that's not a good analogy. I think it is. So I defend, and it, and it doesn't mean it doesn't mean Katie can't play her game. Katie's game is going to be doing what she says and doing what she wants, and then Nick's game is going to be looking at that, going, "Huh, I don't know, I don't know about that." But Katie's like, "Come on, you were the bachelor. You you should know where I'm coming from. Shouldn't we be a little lenient on each other?" <clears throat> you know, um, and 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 uh, and his response uh, is, "Well, you know, isn't it great that you've got fans that are going to be watching what I do?" So stop wearing my closed pod clipped this from Katie Thurston's uh, live stream that she had over the weekend. And of course, um, I texted Katie. I was like, Katie, I'm on vacation in the Bahamas. How are you going to be releasing this gold while I'm on? You had six, seven, eight weeks of barrel scraping Dave where you could have released any of this content and I would have been happy to post it. Barrel scraping but, Dave. you know, in the moment there, uh, I had to get up off of my beach chair, put down Daiquiri Dave and get to it. But um, here we are. Some comments. Nick comes off as condescending, especially when he did that whole weekly advice thing. Well, yeah, condescending. I mean, that... Like I said, that's the brand. I think if you if you told that to Nick, he wouldn't argue with it. He sees life through a sort a certain cynical eye. Like I've said before, and that's what makes him call out some BS, but also, you know, he has to be okay with people like Katie calling out his BS. You know what I mean? It's one of those systems where he's got a big following. He's one of the biggest people to ever come out of the show, whether you like it or not. And Katie's relatively new to it, but she's not new to life. She's not new to snapping back and she's not new to doing the internet. For a lot of people, they go, oh, you know, Katie just needs to, she needs to stop creating all these messes. And you go, no, th th guys, this is what the gladiator is. This is why you're in the audience cheering it on because people share their stuff, you know? And, you know, look, Katie's not going to get it right every time. She's apologized for what she thought of Thomas. You know, she said she got that wrong. Um, her 12 days of mess, other things like that. It's like, look, it's like, it's, I related to stand-up comedy. Like, I'm not going to apologize for trying to tell jokes. And someone who's trying to engage with their social media shouldn't apologize if they get it wrong. And people might go, yeah, well, but, you know, it's you're casting a large wake and it's a collateral damage to others. That's the price you pay when you play with fire is you might get burned. Now, Nick's going to have to realize that there's going to be other contestants that have been in his shoes that don't like the way he reacts and they're going to feel like he burned them and they have every right to reverse Uno it onto him. All right. So I was looking, I was actually looking through my uh, previous videos that I've made on Katie and Nick because I have made a bunch and you know, I'm not going to find all the tic tac -y moments where Nick uh, might have called her out, but he actually offered her really good advice. Albeit, I believe this advice could be received and come off as a superior sort of way of thinking. Like you should, um, it's basically in response to when Katie mentioned she had um, inverse nipples and uh, Nick's response is like, well, maybe don't overshare. Have a watch. I only thing I ever remind her. And this is when is, he's talking about his girlfriend. When you have an audience and I feel it too, you sometimes feel like this responsibility to, to share or give them what they want, so to speak, to answer their questions. Mm -hmm. And I always remind her, you don't have to yeah, do you that. Don't, you don't owe them. You don't owe them anything. Yeah. And just whatever you share, just know that you are giving a bunch of strangers access to you and you don't get to control how they use yeah. that, right? And this is true with people like Lena Dunham, who shared about her life growing up. And then and then in the audience, of people called her horrid names. And it's true about anyone who's in a bio, an autobiography. Oh, my gosh, you did this. Yeah, I told you I did. You know, Matthew McConaughey wrote his autobiography, tells about all of his debauchery growing up. And he's like, I'm giving you, I'm telling you all these things I did. I've learned from them. Katie's kind of the same way where she's commodified who she is and what she's about. She talks about her heartbreak. She talks about body dysmorphia. She talks about her hair, skin care problems, whatever it is, she talks about it versus someone like Nick who does share stuff, but he's more a commentary on things that are happening um, out there and she's more exposing what's going on on the inside. And there are two different things. With stand-up comedy, you can have someone like uh, someone do a joke about men are this way, women are that way, and it's kind of a vast thing. And then you can have someone who's more personal being like, my wife said this, here's my response. You know what I mean? So there's, there's different ways to present information. Katie's using her experiences as the as the uh the fish food and nick's 
for the most part, using Q and A's that come from others. It's very, it's very much easier to not put yourself out there. And if Katie couldn't handle sharing these things and dealing with the internet and this and that, then I would say don't do that. But if you can't handle sharing personal experiences about life, loss, tragedy, breakup, hard situations, you will build a wild following because there's so many people that are out there starved for camaraderie to understand that influencers aren't perfect. They don't have all the answers and then you can learn from their mistakes. Right? And so no matter what you say, no Nothing matter prepared what, prepared for you, yes, mm -hmm. it's, there's always waves, right? The first wave is met with like, oh, you're so like amazing. I love you. Whatever mm -hmm. that, whatever that praise is. Be a Katie. Immediately followed by the second or third wave is going to be when it gets out into the outside of your audience, mm -hmm. you know, when your your critics, so mm -hmm. true, you know, start seeing yes. it and they start sharing it with other people and someone comes from another page. Can you believe what this person posted or ha ha right. ha? And then people will have those opinions and that can affect you. So it's just, right. I'm, oh, this is the most truthful thing Nick's ever said. I would watch, I would, I would love, you know, more psychologists to talk about this. The idea of building up somebody, be a Katie, right? Katie was a contestant. We love Katie. Then Katie became the lead and more people were exposed to Katie. And they're like, oh, Katie, we don't like, you know, and Nick's got the same. He's got a core following reality, Steve, a core following. I've got a core following. If you get outside my core following, there's people that hate what I do. They think it's all, all a front. I'm uh, fake this. I'm fake that. Oh, you know, hey, hey, whatever, whatever people want to think, it's none of my business. And we have to remember that that's part of the price you pay for exposure. No one cared about me for the eight years I was making content until YouTube started recommending it to tens of millions of people. And then it became, oh my gosh, I this what's who's this guy in this floral shirt? We can't him. Belizean bad boy, Bahamian bad boy. Who's this? Decibel Dave, Daiquiri Dave. What a who? He's changed. He's not the same. He's this. He's he doesn't respond to my DMs anymore. Oh my God, it's always something. And it's, and Katie is probably as sensitive as I am. I know uh, she's going through a breakup with John Hersey. I know he's sensitive to a lot of the issues that he's facing within the Bachelor Nation. And we have to almost remind ourselves that they're watching a program, which is our presentation of information and I'm not loving myself with these leads but in my own you know niche following I can relate in the sense that it ain't going to be everyone's cup of tea you're not going to be everyone's favorite no matter what you try to do no matter what press releases you try to give people you just have to understand it's an insatiable beast there's a lot of people on the internet that aggregate there that are not happy that want to commiserate with others uh, they see someone like Nick who's buying a house off of his recap. They think he's a misogynist. They think he's a narcissist. They think he's all these things, but he's got a core audience and they're going to help him pay his bills with whatever he decides to do moving forward with his life. And the same goes for Katie and anyone else making content. So we have to remember to just drown out the noise. Now, sometimes there's, 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 there's solid criticism, but a lot of times you just can't do what's right out there. I, you know, with my own Instagram yesterday, I shared this, um, uh, someone was making fun of the fact that I had my, um, <clears throat> hold on one second. Someone was making, so I posted this video here. I'm on a flight. Um, you don't have to wear your mask anymore. Um, I've got, uh, uh, two vaccines and the booster and this and that. And then someone posts this, uh, you know, cause you're never going to, my point is, is that you're just never going to please everyone and no mask. I just don't get it. And this is the same person who commented no mask. And I was walking around outside in New York city and I go July, 2022 folks. Yeah. You know, this is uh, two plus years dealing with, and then people go, you deserve better treatment. Snarky Dave is my favorite. I'm convinced it will be 2060. I'll be 60 years old and the mask police will still be on duty. And I talked to this person for a long while and we never really came to any conclusions whatsoever. But the person goes, you don't believe in public health. It's etiquette to wear a mask in a public place. Maybe if you were high, you know, one thing after another, when I do live with someone who's high risk and I have dealt with all the issues regarding, you know, my fiance broke a rib coughing because of, uh, you know, the, you know, what she had to deal with and felt and, and ended up getting pneumonia and this and that. And we, we did everything. We, we stayed in place. We sheltered in place. We stayed away from our families for a year because they were high risk. We did all these things and it's just never enough for some people. And it's not just that there's issues all over. It's just never enough for some people. What I'm still learning with my following in which a lot of others, I'm sure Katie is, is that you need to sort of disengage a little bit. And does that mean you're creating an echo chamber? Look, 
I do stand up in front of live humans. I don't believe I live in an echo chamber. I hear differencing of opinions all the time. I don't need it thrown on me every second of the day because people will in the DMs. Like I've said before, we need to create a social media or a version of Instagram or Twitter where you have verified commenters and the rest can just stay in the um, in, in the requested. Because trust me when I say this, with my small following of 15,000 Instagram people, uh, Katie's got almost a million, so I can't imagine what that's like. But with my small following, if you could just see the DMs, if you could just see what's going on out there. So we just need to do a better job of speaking our truth. Katie, keep sharing your mess, and don't worry if Nick's got a problem with that. He's going to share his mess. We're going to be cleaning up each other's messes. Speaking of messes, I'll see you in the live stream later on today. Better check it out. Hit the like button. Comment below. Patreon.com slash Dave Neal. I'll be there at 10 a.m. today if you want to check out my behind-the-scenes photos from the Bahamas. Bye, everybody.